Our episode continues instead of the Republic High Command. Commander Cody and Mace Windu stood on different sides of the galaxy, looking at a hologram of a clone commando. Burst was talking into it. He told them that they had made an engagement with the enemy. Commander Cody was very noticeably disappointed, and even slightly annoyed at this, especially after he gave them the specific order to make sure they didn't engage with the enemy. Burst continued by saying that there were survivors. He didn't know how many, but they started a firefight. Burst explained that he was stationed outside the temple to keep an eye on all the things going on, but a battle began inside the temple. He had confirmed that the clones came into contact with the Sith. There was only one present. There was about 200 Sith troopers on the steps of the temple, and he was unsure of how many were alive elsewhere. Burst mentioned that his squad survived, but they were trapped below the temple in an abandoned training room. They were currently trapped in there, and they needed an escape route. Mace Windu called upon a newer member of the High Council, Jedi Master Tag Vizre. He was a weak way, and he was promoted to the High Council not long after the loss at Coruscant. Master Windu asked if Master Vizre knew of a way out of the training room. Master Vizre informed the clone trooper on the communication device that every single training room from the era of the Old Republic was equipped with a lever under one of the various lamps in the room. If the clones could trigger it, it would open up a hole in the floor for them to escape to. From there, their path would take them to the far side of the mountain range, and it would allow them to get out safely. Master Vizre suggested that once the clone commando gave the information to his brothers, that he make his way to the far side of the mountains to meet up with them. The chances are the exit would have been blasted open because of how old it was. So Master Vizre told the clone trooper to be careful when his brothers were escaping. Master Windu asked if Captain Keeley had survived. Burst nodded his head. Windu told Master Vizre to take two Jedi with him to Tython. Vizre nodded his head and bowed before leaving. Burst asked what the reinforcements were. Windu told him that if there were a Sith Lord, he needed to be dealt with and be taken down. Master Vizre descended the mountain as the call behind him came to an end. When he got to the bottom of the mountain, he was looking for Jedi Masters, but he couldn't find any. Most of all, the Jedi Masters had begun deployment, though in front of him were two Jedi Knights. Master Vizre thought for a moment. He looked around and then decided decided that this would have to suffice. He asked the two Jedi Knights if they would like to accompany him to the planet of Tython. One of them asked if they were permitted to go. Vizre explained that if he was asking, then they were allowed to come. The two of them looked at each other and nodded. They asked what they were going to do, as Vizre explained that they were partaking in a rescue mission. The two Jedi Knights were on board as they followed Master Vizre to the Jedi shuttle and prepared for liftoff. Vizre would inform them that there was a chance they would have to fight a Sith Lord while they were there, though they were encouraged not to engage the Sith Lord alone if they got separated. The challenge would be staying together, and the most important leg of the mission was to help the clones get off the planet alive. One of the Knights asked if there were Sith troopers on the planet, to which the Jedi Master explained that there are around at least 200, but the rest was unknown. Back on Tython, Burst ended his communication with Xan after informing him of how they could escape the training room. The sound of a lightsaber striking at rocks terrified the clones as they began pulling on the lanterns across the room. One of the regs asked why the Jedi would do this in their own rooms. Red Eye, who was always filled with the appropriate answer, suggested that the reason the Jedi did this was because of the guy that was trying to break down the wall and kill them. The reg shut his mouth. Sure, that was a bit rude, but it was the truth. The chances are the Jedi installed these escape doors in case the Sith invaded their home world. It provided younglings a means of escaping and prolonging the legacy of the Jedi if all were killed. Regardless, Captain Keeley pulled a lever and the clones began piling into the hole. Xan asked Red Eye if he could get another injection of Bacta. His battle wound was killing him. He was very fortunate to be wearing clone commando armor because if he wasn't, he would have been dead. It was a miracle that he wasn't dead by now, but the way the shot hit him, it was how he survived. The shot smacked him with intense velocity, but the shot came from below. If it had come from above or straight across, it would have entirely killed him. Red Eye shoved the Bacta into Zan's elbow, and then the two commandos jumped down, sealing up the hole behind them, pulling the lever on the bottom. The fifteen clones and three commandos made their way through the tunnels, the clones in front using their lights attached to the end of their blasters. On the other hand, Scion blasted through the door as he looked around searching for signs of clone troopers. They just simply vanished. Scion raged, screaming at the top of his lungs as he whipped around and threw his lightsaber through a line of ten of his men that had fallen him in, and then used his lightsaber to cut the room to pieces. The clones could hear the echo of Scion's scream as he started running down the hallway faster. Captain Keeley turned his head around as he realized something. He told the commandos that he left the data chip inside the Jedi Council chambers. Zan looked at Red Eye, asking if it was the room that they came in in. 
Red Eye nodded his head, explaining that it was probably the reason why the room was locked up. Zan told Keeley, Red Eye, and Flame to come with them, as they diverged away from the main path. Zan told the clones to get to safety and close the path behind them to make sure that the Sith couldn't follow them. Burst would meet up with them at the checkpoint, and then he would stay with them until they were on their own and safe. Burst was aware that the Jedi were on their way, but he was really unsure of what their purpose of being here would do or serve as reinforcements. Zan, as he was running along the corridors and up a small ramp, he contacted Burst and told him that they were going to get the chip that Captain Keeley left inside the Jedi Temple. They would be at the rendezvous point as soon as possible. Burst told Zan that if any Jedi arrived, he would let them know where they were. Zan thanked them before turning off his communication device. Down the hallway, the rigs closed off another exit, and another exit, exit after exit. The tunnels were built to shield the younglings in case of an attack, and so the walls that closed up behind the clones looked like dead ends. So if someone was chasing them through the muddy terrain, it looked like the tracks ended, so the Sith wouldn't have any way to get to them. Of course they could cut down the wall, but that would delay them from getting to the younglings faster, giving them enough time for this escape route. First was stationed near the landing craft his squad came down on, as he saw the Jedi Starfighter make a quiet landing. Burst looked around and saw the majority of the Sith army had gone missing. He knew that the two wanderers were inside the temple, but if there were more, they were nowhere to be found. Burst made his way down the mountain as he greeted Jedi Master Visray and the two Jedi Knights with him. Master Visray introduced Natabre Morden and Anakin Skywalker. The two Jedi Knights had become friends in the span of a couple days, though they hadn't yet developed a tight-knit bond, one that would be so frequent amongst the ranks of the Jedi. Master Visray asked the clone commando where the clones were. Burst told him that the clone commandos and Captain Keeley were running back into the Jedi Temple to retrieve the data chip. The rest of the clone troopers were making their way out of the temple. Visray told Burst to set a trap, to which Burst asked why. The Jedi Master looked towards the West Wing and told him to set a trap there with any of the explosives that they had. Burst thought back to when they left Kamino with his brothers, and then he remembered that Flame had a bunch of explosives inside the ship. Burst took the orders he prepared the trap. Visray told the clone commando that they would be heading towards the Jedi Temple to make sure that every single clone got out alive. Anakin Natabre followed Visray as he jumped up and began to scale the mountain. When the Jedi got to the top, Visray turned to the two Jedi Knights and told them that the clones were living beings and should be respected and treated as such. This was their lesson. They were going to save as many lives as they could today. Anakin and Natabre nodded their heads in unison, saying yes, master. Below the Jedi Temple, Cyan ripped apart the room before discovering the tunnels beneath the Jedi Temple. Cyan told the men to follow him as a hundred men piled into the tunnels. Cyan followed the trails of footsteps to a wall as he realized the wall was covered. Cyan reached back and used the force as he shattered the wall with a force push. Cyan saw the footsteps as he told his men to follow it. As he looked and followed a trail of four different footsteps that led back into the Jedi Temple. Cyan started running after the footsteps that he followed up to the temple, while at the same time alerting the hundred men inside the Jedi Temple that there were clones making their way for the temple. The clone commandos and Captain Keeley got into the training room that was inside the Jedi Temple itself, as they pulled a lever and opened it up. Zan would lift it up first, being that he was in no condition to be pushing up people. Zan helped Red Eye, Keeley, and Flame up as they closed the latch below them. The clones moved towards the door as it creaked open. There were a hundred troopers in here, but they were all separated. Zan told his squad that they'd be acting on Command Order 335. Keeley looked over at him, as Zan told him that three was for how many commandos there were, 35 was for stealth, execution, and performance. Keely nodded his head. As a clone, he understood what direction he was going to be going in during this mission, as he put both of his blaster pistols away. Zan reached onto his boot and pulled out a vibro blade. It was much larger than the vibro knife inside the wrist, but the reason Zan never used it was because it was too unbalanced. It didn't have the same swiftiness of a regular knife, especially since the knife was inside of his wrist. Zan gave the blade to Keely. Keeley took the blade and followed the clones out of the room as the commandos started running down the hallway. Red Eye reminded Zan that the staircase had been blown up. They had to make sure they got to the Jedi Council chambers without alerting too many Sith troopers. Flame suggested that there had to be another way to get up there. Flame told Red Eye that there wasn't anything on the hollow map, before Red Eye reminded Flame that there was also nothing on the hollow map about hidden Jedi passageways below the training rooms. Flame agreed, instead of putting up a fight as the clones tried to figure out where they were. Keeley pointed in the right direction suggesting that the clones follow that path forward. The clones would have to run through the archive room, out past the clerk's desk, towards the grand hall where the large staircase sat. 
Zan took lead as he crouched down, following what Keeley said, though as they moved forward there was a group of four soldiers. The clones quickly got to work, but cutting them down moving quickly, and then continuing the move. Keeley was a clone captain. He certainly could keep up with these clone commandos, but it was challenging. Captain Keeley watched as Zan pulled forward, cutting down two more soldiers. His men behind him did the same to four more men. Captain Keeley then realized that there was a reason he was a captain and not a commando. The three commandos continued moving forward, cutting down more men in their path. The way they saw it, if they discovered, the less trouble they would have though they were slowing down their pace as a Sith Lord approached behind them, gaining speed as he got to the underground of the training room. Sion used the force and shot as much power up as he could. As the floor ruptured and Sith troopers were alerted to the sound of the loud crash coming from the training room, Flame, Red Eye, Keeley, and Zan took cover as dozens of troopers ran past them. The clones saw their opportunity and ran for it. As they did, they heard Sion ignite his lightsaber, yelling at his men for coming towards him instead of stopping the clones. A couple of Sith troopers were cut down as the clones ran forward. Keeley gave Zan his blade back, as the clones turned to using their blasters instead of knives. The clones shot down several soldiers before they heard the sound of the lightsaber in front of them. They thought it was the end for them, and then they saw three lightsabers. It was a the Jedi. They had just killed a couple of Sith troopers. Master Vizre asked the clones where they were going. Zan told the Jedi Master they were trying to get to the Council Chambers, but before Vizre could respond, he pushed the clones out of the way with a force as he moved in between them and a lightsaber throw made by Sion. The clones turned around as Anakin and Nendotabre looked at the ugly beast. Sion pointed forward with his lightsaber as he caught it, as the rest of his men that were left inside the temple began to open fire. The clones immediately reciprocated by shooting at the soldiers. Master Vizre told them to move up the stairs. They would have an advantage by using the railing and having higher ground over the enemy. Skywalker pushed the clones up the stairs as he followed Tabre up and Vizre followed him up. The Jedi continued deflecting blaster strikes as more and more Sith troopers fell to the ground. Master Vizre looked at Sion and told the men to get the chip and get out of here. He would buy them as much time as he could. Anakin looked at Tack and told him he stay with Master, before Master Vizre stopped him and told him to go as he continued walking down the stairs. Anakin felt a tug on his arm. Natabre told him they needed to follow the mission. Anakin nodded his head as he and the clones ran up the stairs. Zan told the men to prepare for ascension cables. The Tabre told them that they wouldn't need them. The clones turned around and when they got to the top of the stairs, confusedly, the Tabre told the men to hold on. She lifted her hands and picked up Zan and Red Eye as she moved the two clones to the uppermost half of the stairwell. Anakin did the same for Keeley and Flame, and the two Jedi jumped up, following the men up towards the council chambers. Outside of the mountain range, 14 regs emerged from the ground, as Burst told them to take covering positions. Burst also handed out as many of the heavier weapons as he could. Rocket launchers, rotary cannons, what you name it. Burst told them that there was an enemy of nearly 400 men making their way over here. The clones asked how he expected to take them on. There was only 15 clones in total, including the commando. Burst told them that he laid a trap for them. He would bring them into the trap and expose them, but the clones needed to be ready for one last fight. The clones who emerged from the the tunnels were exhausted. Their last several hours had been hell. They lost their entire battalion, most if not all their squad mates. It was atrocious for them. They finally felt like they had survived, only just so they could be thrusted back into more combat. It was a daunting task, 15 versus 400, but Burst told them that they could do it. They just needed to give their all. Burst believed that with the amount of explosives he set, he could easily take out 200 to 300 soldiers. It was just a matter of surviving the last 100. Burst directed the men to get to a higher location. Most of the setup positioned the clones on the mountain with enough cover to protect themselves and enough room to escape if they needed to. The setup took some time, but when they were ready, it was ready. Burst laid down and set his scope out, as he laid the first shot into the head of a Sith trooper marching their direction. Burst was so good from distance that his shot plowed through the first trooper into the trooper behind him. Burst told the clones that the rest of them were now coming this way. See, Burst, being a commando, knew how to lay a trap for Sith troopers. He wasn't just going to booby trap the ground and said he laid a couple of explosives on the mountain so that it would crumble down on the Sith and cover them. The Sith troopers picked up pace as they continued to run closer and closer into the trap laid by the clone commando. Burst shot round after round, clipping and hitting targets with each shot as they got closer. Some of the Sith troopers started shooting back, but by the time they got into range, Burst clicked the efficient switch. The ground opened up under them as a massive boulder came crashing down. The Sith troopers didn't see it coming, because as the smoke rolled up into their faces, the clones all rose from their crouched positions and began to open fire. This took total advantage in numbers away from the Sith troopers, as they blasted down and crushed through the lines of the Sith. 
first noted that the boulders were able to successfully wipe out several of the troopers present. The blaster fire from the clones put the Sith troopers into chaos. The few that survived the trap emerged from the smoke and then were blasted down. The clone with his hand on the rotary blaster ripped through the Sith. While yes, the Sith were firing back, it didn't do them all that much justice, as they would like. The clones were in higher positions, and it offered them an advantage. The Sith troopers just didn't realize the clones had the high ground. Though, as the smoke cleared, it was obvious there were more than a hundred survivors. First started pushing men in a direction away from the Sith. He told them that they need to loop back around to the Jedi Temple. The clones at this point were about to embrace their deaths, but they listened. First called over to Zan. At the moment, Keeley had gotten a hold of the disc, and Zan took the call. Burst told them that they were in need of reinforcements. There were about 200 Sith troopers chasing them around the forest. Zan looked to his left, and then ordered Red Eye and Flame to ignite Demolition Code 19. The two clones told Keeley to follow them, as they hopped out of the small hole inside the Jedi Council room. Zan looked back. Anakin was looking at the door. He looked back and told the commandos to go save their brothers. He was going to help Master Vizre. Natabre told Anakin not to, but he told her that it was his responsibility to help. Natabre told him that she was coming too, as the two Jedi jumped off the stairs as Zan watched them leave his visibility before he too climbed out of the hole behind him. The commando squad ran up the side of the mountain. Red Eye shot a detonator charge into the other side of the valley, while Flame began laying a trap on this side of the valley. Keeley watched the clone commandos prepare a trap as the sound of blaster fire and the clones making callouts got closer and closer. There were now 13 clones remaining. They needed to make this count, right here and right now. Inside the Jedi Temple, Anakin slammed down, barely missing Sion, as Sion kicked Anakin in the chest, throwing him off balance. Natabre stood up over Anakin, defending him, before she too was pushed back, tripping over Anakin. Master Vizre took advantage of this moment as he swung forward at Sion's back, but he was too slow. As Sion ducked under the swing and spun his blade around his hand, cutting through Vizre's hand before driving his lightsaber through Vizre's stomach and driving him backwards ten feet, before kicking him off the lightsaber and bending him over a railing. Sion whipped his head around as Anakin got to his feet, pulling Vizre's lightsaber with the force and igniting the second lightsaber and swinging towards Sion with ferocity. Natabri looked at Anakin in awe as he pushed Sion backwards, throwing the Sith Lord off balance, though Sion took advantage of Anakin's advancement. By using his aggression to his disadvantage, Sion grabbed Anakin Skywalker's arm and threw him against the wall as Anakin hit his head and tumbled down to the ground. Natabri got to her feet and called out Sion. The Sith Lord turned around and began to laugh. He stepped forward, raising his blade, and swung forward. Outside the Jedi Temple, the clones made it through the valley as the Sith troopers followed them. Burst cried out for Zan to call the order as Zan said not yet. A moment later, the Sith troopers were in position as Zan gave the order. The walls of the mountain began to collapse. The Sith troopers, having survived one trap, wouldn't be lucky enough to survive another. The clones all turned around and began to open up fire, laying down the fires as the Sith troopers were caught in the rut. Those who weren't immediately killed by the trap were shot dead on sight. Ah. Keely, Zan, Red Eye, and Flame used their higher ground to fire the heaviest shots they had into the Sith lines, pulverizing them immediately. Ah. The clones began to cheer as Keely looked at Zan, telling him that it seemed as if that was the last of the Sith troopers. Inside the temple, Natabre was on her back again. She was crawling backwards as she looked at Sion. Her lightsaber was on the far side of the room thrown from her hand while dueling with the incredibly powerful duelist. Anakin's eyes opened back up as he looked at Natabre and slowly got to his feet. Anakin was dizzy and his vision was clouded and shaky. Sion could hear Skywalker get to his feet, but he didn't pay attention. Anakin knew what Sion was doing as he ignited his lightsaber and ran forward. Natabre backflipped up to avoid a strike by Sion as she readied herself by pulling her lightsaber towards her. Sion swung violently around as he twisted his body around to cut Skywalker in half. Anakin slid to the ground, sliding beneath Sion's swing while dragging his blade across Sion's waist. Natabre jabbed forward, slamming her blade into Sion's back as Skywalker jumped up and swung around, cutting Sion's head clean off his body. The Sith Lord's body fell to the ground, dead, as a lightsaber sheathed upon impact the ground. Anakin and Natabre looked at Sion, and acknowledged that he was dead, before they ran over to Master Vizre to see if he was alive. The weak way Jedi Master tumbled off the railing as he coughed up his last breath. Anakin held Master Vizre in his lap and told him they would get him help, as Natabre stood over Anakin's shoulder, looking down, preparing to run and get help from the clones. Master Vizre shook his head as he grabbed Anakin's hand, pulling him closer. The Jedi Master whispered into Anakin's ear, telling him that the secret was patience. The key to being a Jedi was patience. Master Vizre ended his life telling the Chosen One to trust in the Force. Master Vizre's grip fell out of his hands as he fell backward, heavier. 
Anakin lowered Master Vizray to the ground and looked back up into Tabre. She bowed her head in sadness. Anakin told her that they should bury him at the home of the Jedi. The Tabre agreed. The two of them would take Master Vizray to the burial chambers and lay him to rest, turning on the age-old machine and sending Master Vizray's body away, passing the Jedi Master onto the living force where he would forever remain. Skywalker would take the Jedi Master's lightsaber and give it to Mace Windu upon their return to Ahch 2. Anakin and Tabre would walk side by side outside the Jedi Temple. When they got out, they looked over at the clones who were all celebrating their victory. Anakin realized in this moment what the Clone War would bring this galaxy. It would bring challenge, loss, tragedy, but also triumph, camaraderie, and serenity. Sure, peace wasn't here yet, but someday it would be. Anakin looked back over at Natabre, who was still walking side by side with him, and then looked back to the survivors. The men all turned around to see the two Jedi instead of three, and the moment of realization all hit them. Their cheers slowed down and they became quiet. Anakin would step forward, addressing the men, telling them that many were lost, but the battle was won. Digging into his own heart, Anakin would continue saying that the only way to carry on would be with the memories of those they served with, holding them up and taking them with the warriors who survived the end. The war may have just begun, but this was a sign that through the most challenging atmosphere, those dedicated to bring balance and peace back to the galaxy would be able to champion themselves as victors. The men all rallied together, realizing that they had all faced the worst of this short war, but they had only not seen the end of it. The men would load up onto the shuttle and prepare to depart back to Ahch 2. All the survivors would be brought to the homeworld of the Jedi so that they could be honored for their service to the galaxy. The commandos would be hailed as heroes of this mission, and for Captain Keeley, he would reveal everything that had been intercepted from Sith communication. When the shuttles landed on Ahch 2, the Jedi would commemorate the sacrifices of the hundreds of clones and the two Jedi who died on Tython serving with their men. The clone commanders would accelerate from rookies to elitism, having survived and claimed victory over the worst the clones had faced thus far. And for Master Vizray, he would be remembered as a hero who assisted in the death of Lord Sion. When the ceremony was over, Mace Windu told Natabra and Anakin that they were both brave heroes for doing what had to be done, when they were the only ones who could do anything in the face of adversity. Captain Keeley would be brought to the command center on the Temple Island. Anakin, Natabre, Zan, Flame, Burst, and Red Eye were all present. The clone captain plugged in the data disk as a computer siphoned through all the data to find the most important piece. The command center was full of top voices across the entire Republic military. They all watched as a hologram popped up. It was Darth Revan, and he was receiving a transmission from a trusted ally of his and Darth Bane. The Dark Lord asked Lord Revan what it was that he was searching for, and if he could be of any assistance in helping him search for it. Lord Revan turned towards Bane and told him that he was searching for the ancient Starforge. It would be in their pathway to true victory in this war. Bane asked if there was any idea of where it could be found, to which Revan said, it was likely in the unknown regions. The transmission cut after that. The Jedi looked around at each other. They all tried to figure out what it meant. What was a Starforge? Master Opa Rancis emerged from the crowd, telling the Jedi that the Starforge was an ancient weapon that harnessed the energy of a star and of the Force to create an unlimited supply of anything for the one who controlled it. The Jedi looked around at each other. Mace Windu stood stern as he directed everyone present, telling them that no matter what the Sith were after, the Jedi would have to find it before they did. The Jedi would have to get to the Starforge and stop the Sith from creating an army that could march across the galaxy and destroy everything. The clone commandos present told Master Windu that his orders were their next directive. Anakin and Atabre stood next to each other, eager to prepare for their next mission too. Meanwhile, across the galaxy on the planet of Tython, the body of Sion began to slowly move back towards itself. The removed pieces of his body connected, and Sion breathed again. He was alive, his death only temporary, but now realizing the importance of allies that he had himself in the Legion of Sith. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Season 1. Again, special thanks to all of our patrons. You guys, you guys are awesome. Benjamin Wells, Tiger Boy, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, Darth Cheesy, Apollo, Mad Men Studios, Anakin 003, Lemon Knight, Flynn Van Seas, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. Well, you know what to do. Smash that like button. All right, let's let's do a little review about season one. So, <laughs> I'm I'm really excited about this. I I hope you guys enjoyed season one. Um, 
I, I really tried uh, to, to, to do the whole arc thing, the whole Anakin arc, I feel like was completed. Obviously the whole story for Anakin hasn't been completed, but the season one arc, the purpose of fulfilling that arc for Anakin was completed. I set up a possible season two. It is now up to you guys to make season two happen. I made season one, and so if you guys want season two, well, you gotta smash that like button and, and, and destroy the like button on all these videos, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna release a full cut of season one with the first part of the, uh, the original video redone. And so that's going to come out so you guys can watch it all in succession. That'll come out at some point. I don't know when it's going to be done, but um, that'll come out for you guys. And so this is season one. Season one um, was a great journey. I, I'm really proud of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm very happy with it. I would love to do this series. I've talked about this before several times. I've talked about it on Twitch. I've talked about it on Discord. I've talked about it in comment section. I would love to do the series. I would love to make season one 18 episodes. I would love to turn these six episodes into 12 more episodes and make an awesome season one, make it more complete and, and larger. Um, but that's entirely up to you guys. This was more so an experiment to see if you guys were interested in it. And so if you guys really like it, then we'll do it again. Obviously, right now I'm working on season two of something else, so <laughs> I wonder what that could be. <laughs> um, but I'm working on season two of what comes next, and so that's going to come next, obviously. But yeah, this is um, this is this. I hope you all enjoyed it. I mean, I, I really, I really tried to to make each of the arcs feel like they had their own individual weight. Again, I talked about this as being more like a Clone Wars esque series, where the series is built to be more geared like the Clone Wars, where it's like. You know, you have your own intro, you have your own quote to start off the episode, you have your own arcs that kind of go together. It, it's, it's, it's more of a TV-like show on YouTube. And, um, you know, I, I really, I really try and separate myself from the other YouTubers that do these what-ifs. And I always do that because I want to make the best content for you guys. And I really hope that the season one could achieve that. Obviously, there's so much in the room for doing a season two, uh, season three, even, you know, extending season one to, to as many episodes. I mean, I really would love to do multiple episodes, multiple arcs, all that stuff, and and, and really continue this story. Um, again, that just is up to you guys. The The reason I wanted to do this miniseries is because I wanted you guys to have a very unique spirit experience here on, on PPSW where you guys can enjoy, like, like again like watching a tv show with your friends right you have to enjoy this like this unique aspect of the star wars community where we're all sitting here enjoying you know a story and and excited to see where the story goes next i would love to see where the story goes next again it's up to you guys to see if that happens as of right now my main focus is season two of what comes next and that's going to be you know the earth series that's coming next um and right now well i'm not going to say anything you know i gotta leave it up for you guys anyways i love you all i hope you all enjoyed season one spread the love and always remember my friends may the force be with you